Welcome everybody to another episode of Harami United. We've just had the game against Nottingham Forest, um, Manchester United. Um, one, Forest three, but you know what? Two. That's a, two, was it? No, no, three, two, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, three, two. Um, yeah, three, two. But yeah, before we start any of that, obviously, you know, obviously within the club, um, sad news come out, I think it was on Thursday, wasn't it? Um, Kath? Yes, Thursday. Kath Vips, um, the long-serving... Um, she was working in the receptionist. Um, I think she was working, what, 55 years at Manchester United. Um, she was, from what I hear, the last person Sir Matt Busby had hired for the club. Um, wow. In, in the, um, you know, before, um, you know, he, he left Manchester United um, as the manager. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's quite strange, isn't it, that one? Because she's obviously not a player, she's not a coach, she's not somebody who went in front of the media, had to, you know, was visible to the fans around the world. But I think today's um, it's silence, the the banner the applause, there, the banner. Out, the applause, you know, the you know, had all out as well. I think you just go to show what she was and the character that she was around the the, the football club. Yeah, I think. As you said, she wasn't a player, she wasn't a manager, she wasn't someone that was a public face of the company or the team. But it just shows, and you know, even players, Bex did a tribute, um, current players did tributes, and the one from the club was amazing. Um, mm. You know, the video that they put yeah. out, and it was just her, and honestly, it nearly brought me to tears, because it was just so emotional, and it it really hit home how much of a big influence or a big figure she really was. You know, people said she was the, you know, she's Mrs. Manchester United. Mm. You know, Aki's worked at Man United. Even he said, like, she's like a mother to everyone there. And it's, you know, it's a massive loss. Um, Obviously, like you said, 55 years or something. Mm. Something like that, yeah. Something years. like that. And I mean, I remember, I think it was during COVID and Juan Mata dropped flowers off to her house. Yeah, I think she went, he went that in. That was, he, yeah, like, that was one anything. thing that always sticks in my mind. And like anytime Rio or Neville goes back to the training ground, there's always videos of them. And it's just, it's, it's surreal in a way. But look, all we can do is, you know, our prayers and condolences to the family and friends of Kath Phipps and to everyone involved at the club. And, you know, may she rest in peace. Yeah, 100%. Like I said, it's, um, I think this is a part of the club that's been um, living through her. Uh, I think she's probably one of the, like I says, um, the last link between um, yesteryears with Sir Matt Busby and, you know, she with what happened with the Munich uh, disaster and all the, you know, the Busby babes and all that stuff there. And obviously the things that she'd seen, and like you said, just the, the, the motherly figure that she was for, not just obviously players, but from anybody you hear from whoever used to walk through those doors, I think she treated them the same. So yeah, um, sad news. Um, and I think she will be sorely missed. And yeah, I think we also heard news, um, earlier on the week as well. Um, even, I think it was the day before. I think it was Wednesday. Was it the Wednesday? Yeah, a fellow yes. red, um, who appeared on, um, I think some of the Stratford Paddock. Stratford Paddock. He was known there. Um, I'm think... not sure if he was on any other channels, but I know he did a lot of work for the Mank, which okay. is like a local social media page. They do interviews in and around town, little skits, uh, things like that. Um, but yeah, I believe you're referring to um, Abdullah. Yeah. Or Abdullah, as he was known on Paddock. Mm -hmm. And again, a fellow red, you know, a fellow Muslim brother to myself. And he was, I believe, 26, 27. No, I didn't So he's, oh, yeah. you know, he's younger than us. Mm -hmm. Well, younger than me. And well, younger than you as well. But like, just again, that just put things into perspective of like, life's too short, man. 100% man uh, and all the other things that, that that go on as well I mean even today we heard 
some you know horrific news even towards um with um Michael Antonio uh, West Ham um I mean our best wishes go to him obviously we understand he was in a car accident as well um of the, the 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 West Ham club statement you know kind of read you know he's had the accident and kind of please um you know just respect privacy at this time privacy which... of the family yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, people are feeling the worst, and I think they have since tweeted out as well that you know he's, he's stable, but he's obviously in a London hospital. So yeah, best wishes go out to him as well. And um, obviously, even with within hours, I don't know um, um, Aki's had some sad news as well. Um, even within my own family, you know, a few know today as well. Um, young people, um, like you said, passing away. It's just it's just too yeah. frequent, too too often. And I think, you know, what it, it makes you realise that life is so short and we have this beautiful game football manchester united and crazy have how much we um squabble and fight and you know you know at the end i think we always want the best for our team you know we, we just want to see our team being successful but today yeah um also i mean like you said manchester united 2 nottingham forest 3 Dissect it, man. So I was trying to see, you know, obviously you've not really seen them. I think this today is probably the second time you've seen them under Amaru. So I did watch the, what was the midweek game? Arsenal. Not that one. Uh, Bodo Glint. Oh, Bodo Glint. Okay, yeah, So yeah. I did watch that from Pakistan mm-hmm. on terrible internet connection. I was saying, even with their lagging internet, internet connection, yeah. Um, so shout out to anyone in Southeast Asia, man. Like, how do you lot do it? I have no idea. Like after a full day of work, staying up to watch and support your team. I've and Manchester United at that as well, especially the way they play yeah. and, and the way they Yeah, especially the way we play. And so I watched that. I didn't really get a good grips of it because again I was on my phone as opposed to a TV or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the boys around me were asleep, so I had my, my headphones turned down a bit as well. And then I think the first game I watched properly was like you said, the Arsenal game. Awesome. Where in all honesty, I thought we played quite well. We got out done by yeah, yeah. We got out done by a killer set piece set piece routine. But we've never been able to defend set pieces for as long as I can remember. I can't remember the last time we scored from a set piece. I think it was Varan under Ten Hag. And that was like the first time in over a year. <laughs> so like us being bad at set pieces, attacking and defensively is nothing new to me. Yeah, I mean, even uh, I remember listening to a podcast earlier this week as well about Rio. Um, Rio said even he wasn't that great at um, set pieces, but you know, in new teams like Stoke, we're going to put it on you. And you know, we did have some dodgy results against Stoke. I think the as thing well. with Arsenal as well, the way they set up for that set piece is so you've got Declan Rice on the corner. I'm going to go into a bit of analysis and tactical shit here. So anyone that wants to give me some shit, feel free. Um, but you got Declan Rice on the corner, you've got five, six men, however many are in the box, but they're all on the far post, and they all stay in that, that you know, that let's Go call it the door. final third of the 18 yard box. They all stay there until the ball's about to be whipped in, and then they run in and they it's take their chaos. positions. So it's you can't man mark it because who the hell do you man mark and how without leaving gaps, and how the hell do you zonal mark that? Because they don't well, come in in orderly. They just sort of, like you said, it's chaos. Yeah, yeah, and it's chaos. Someone gets a head on, someone gets a flick on, and there you go, too, no? And I suppose um, one way of dealing with it is putting some players up, because from what I from what I hear and read, there's like 19 players in the box, you know, tricky, you know, trying to attack and defend that. So there's 19 yeah. players out of the possible 22 players on a pitch. There's 19 of them in that box. So what you do is you you send two three of Man United players up their their, yeah. their end uh, towards their half and let's see how many they hold back then and how many have they have in the box like do you know what I mean so there's always around it but look I've heard a lot of people moaning about um you know Arsenal the set pieces and how they're the new Stoke and all this business look <laughs> I always thought penalties free kicks corners were part of the game so if that's if, one thing I don't get. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so if they take in, you know, look, a lot of our fans who welcomed Ineos and Brailsford and all these marginal gains, yeah, none of you lot can be complaining about the marginal games that Arsenal made by the, the corner routine. Okay, Remember so when uh, Jürgen Klopp 
got a coach specifically throwing coach. Throwing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it worked for him. Look, that's what I'm trying to say. If they talk, if people want to talk about marginal gains and all this business, that's marginal gains right there in front of your face. So, like I said, people can take the piss out of Arsenal and you know the the football and all this business. I think a lot of our fans, that's what they're craving for. If they can get a one 0 win by a corner at this moment in time, when what we're in thirteenth, fourteenth, at the present Something moment in like time. You know, I think I think they'll take it. But I yeah, think moving City on. City take a one 0 win through a corner at this point. <laughs> Look, we may touch upon City, but you know what? Who who are we to comment on Man City when our team are the way they yeah, are at the present exactly. moment in time? But like, uh, yeah, even today's game, the first goal, corner, and it's almost like Again, we've never been able to defend set pieces, so I'm not shocked. I mean, like, Just... yeah. <laughs> You know, were you not aware? You know, look what happened in midweek, you know. And and I think the problem is a lot of people, especially a lot of fans in, in the groups that we're with, they're just almost dismissed um, Nottingham Forest. It's almost Even like, though yeah, you know, they recently won Player of the Month, Goal of the Month and Manager of the Month, I believe. Yeah, and they're above us, you know, mm-hmm. and they're doing a lot better than us. And, you know, and I wasn't surprised I mean, one, one nil down. And I mean, again, yeah, it was positive that we held on to the ball. I think we had, at one point, I think it was at 80, 79% of possession. Um, you know, we was, we was knocking on the door. I think when we scored our goal, which is a good goal, um, then Forrest came out a little bit more. And then second half, what do you Um I mean, well, that goal by Morgan Gibbs White, I mean... Right, can I get your opinion on this? Because people are saying right. it's an easy save for Onana to make. Mm-hmm. I think it's a fantastic hit. The way it swerves, I don't know if that's got anything to do with the storm that's running around, but the way it's like it looked well hit. Look, I think whether he meant key, it or not, a keeper of um, Anana stature. <coughs> excuse me, and bear in mind, I think he's been our best player this season. Um, mm, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Well, for me, I'm going to say Masrawi, but. No, no, yeah. I mean, I mean, but Anana's been here from right from the start, so I'm going to count yeah. that as well. But Mazzaro has been obviously phenomenal. But yeah, um, should he save that? Yes. I mean, and this is the thing, isn't it? It's like, you know, he, we know he's not that poor to be doing this week in week out. Obviously, last season he had a bit of a, a bit of a terrible start to the season when his first season, but then towards the end he was better, a lot better than this season. He's been really good. Uh, and yeah, he's made, you know, I'll call that error. But like you said, unless you're in the goal and, and you could see going through players, whatever have you, it is a mistake. I'm not going to, uh, you know, sugarcoat it. But so many things before that, you know, he should be closed down. Morgan Gibbs watch should be closed down. But then the third one, I mean, some people are trying to blame um, Anana. I'm not having that because you can see, you know, where he is, how the ball gets put. On the other, you know, that's why they always say, as a as a striker or somebody who's heading the ball from one side of the box, you go to the opposite side of the box, um, to the opposite corner of the goal, and that's exactly what um, Woods did. What Martinez is doing, Leach is leaving it. He's obviously lost his bearing. And he thinks it's going out. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like uh, I don't know. I've said, like I said, I know, I know what it is, and I, and I, and again, I just feel sorry for Amarim. Do you know what I mean? Because if he's not thinking, what have I got myself into? <laughs> then he's got a massive set of balls. That's all uh, I'm gonna say. Yeah, and look, I think whether it's online, whether it's in groups and things, people just keep talking about, oh, this player, or oh, we haven't got the, you know, this is the worst squad we've ever had. With, you know, I, and you know, I, I even mentioned. I, I think some people are saying, you know, we should have kept Fred, and I think Fred's doing apparently well. Fred uh, smashed know, it. McTominay's smashing it. Well, this is what um, I was going to say. I, I was saying McTominay. Obviously, his team. Juan Basaka's doing okay. Yeah, I think scored a couple of goals as well. I think McTominay's um, top of the league the last time I looked with Napoli, and from what the quotes you hear about him, people are saying, "How the hell did United sell him? You know, what a great player he is." And then I think one of the lads in the group was saying to me, oh, you can't look back. And I'm like, well, look, how many times do we have to say, you know, I, I even people were getting upset even when I said it online. This is a graveyard for talent. 
and I'm not just talking about the players because, like I said, I'm not. I, I've gone stop. I, even Harry Maguire, I'm not his biggest fan, but I've even stopped talking about him because I don't think it's even his fault. Eleven plus years of the same old shit that we see. I really feel for Amarim. Do you know what I mean? And go on. You're gonna say something. The one thing that's like with this whole. Can I call it an agenda that fans have? I, I don't know. Well, agenda like, in ter- terms of. Let me explain it, and then we'll figure out what it is. So it's like six weeks ago, everything was Ten Hag's fault. Yep. Now all of a sudden, it's the players' fault. Was it not the players beforehand? Well, the, I'm finding some of the players, but then um, it's still Eric Ten Hag's fault because of the six hundred million he spent. He chose the, the players. All these players, like as if Ruben Amarin's had a transfer window to change that. No, 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 but just that, forget Amarin for one second, you know, then they, they weren't all Eric Ten Hag's players, because we've seen multiple reports of a, you know, he did not even want to get rid of players like uh, McTominay. Okay. He wanted De Jong, reported he wanted Harry Kane. Look, there's, there's many players that he wanted and he probably didn't get, and there's some probably, you know, that were third, fourth on his list and he's got, you know, and that's with every manager, that's with every coach who does that. But obviously there, there's some players that he's talking about that he didn't even want. I don't think he really wanted Ugarte in the end. Because that meant for him to yeah, lose I... Scott McTominay. Do you know what I mean? Um, and you know what? I'm... Seeing Ugarte so far, I don't see it. A lot of people are, are praising him. Uh, I'd have rather look, kept Scott. Yeah, and look, like I says, I, I, I've gone, and I'm probably the worst person now to start looking and comment on players. I, I'll, certainly I'll comment on if somebody's had a poor game or somebody's not done well. Bro, I'm fed up of calling players out because I think it's just boring. Because like I don't I said, think anyone did well today. That's the thing. No, no, that's what I mean. So, irrespective of forget today, like I said, you know, even last year, you know, obviously for the last eleven years, I've always said it's only Bruno for me. Obviously, Ibrahimovic had a kind of a decent spell. You know, the players after Fergie that have come in, but anybody else after that, you know, it's not been great. And and. And all I can say in terms of Amarim, we have to give him time. There's nothing else but we can do. Um, we can't be so naive just to give him time and not... We can't absolve him of all the blame. Because, let's be real, the reason why Ineos got rid of Eric Ten Hag so quickly after the season started is because they want progression in the squad and to move up the, uh, the table. Because otherwise, you're not helping Amarim... You know, if you think Amarim can't do anything this season and bring us up in the the you know the table because he isn't going to get time on the training pitch, well then you don't bring him so early on because you know you you are setting him up to fail. Do you know what I mean? So if you are thinking he has, he he can only do something say like, you know, off the pitch, uh, you know, not on the training ground, should I say, not in the schedule, or well, we should have waited before he came in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereby, whether it was in the, you know, whatever winter break we have in January after the, I think it's usually... Should have kept the, rude the up until that point game. or whatever. And... Yeah, you know, so I think the, I, I, like I said, I'm not blaming anybody because uh, in terms of players and managers, because I've gone beyond that. But I think we will start have to, obviously, looking at what Amrim is doing as well. Um, and... And I, for one, will, like I says, I, I'm not a coach. I The decisions that he makes, I've always said. Um, I'm hearing already people saying, oh, that was strange subs. Oh, that was strange. Team yeah, team why team, did he you do know? that? You should have taken why that do... person. I should have taken that. You know, and, and like I always say, you know, there's so many of these great managers that I've never seen coach a team. Uh, e- even, you know, amateur or kids level, I've never seen them coach that kind of team. It's an amazing Heather way. The best talent. opinion I heard recently was... Um about tactical analysis being better from the stadium or something. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I from think uh, a very odd hedge. Yeah, you know, you have when to be When you can watch stadium. it on Sky and have 25 camera angles. <laughs> you have to be at the stadium, but, you know, there's so much invested in um, video analysis teams who do video analysis of oppositions, but that doesn't count, apparently. Yeah, just... You know, but look, I think just kind of on, on today's game, I think... 
we just got to give it time. I think that's all we can do. We, we we can see some kind of idea. That's what he called it when he first started. He wanted to come across as an idea, and I, and, and I can vouch for that. We can see an idea, but that, then I could also see an idea in Ali's first couple of seasons, or even Ten Hag's. Yeah, even Ten even Hag some even kind of idea. Van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, the first year, 18 months, I could see the idea. Um, you know, so I'm not going to get hung up on that. Like I said, I'll, I'll always be Can I just 18. ask, what is your opinion on this three at the back? From what you've seen so far? I've, I've got no opinion in terms of... How can I put it? I don't like it because I think it has to change the whole setup of the squad. I just don't think we've got enough players to do that. Because, you know... Because the other thing I worry about is when Amrim does go... What will we do then if we if we buy in players that are on a four or three five two? These wing backs and not wingers, and they're not. And if the manager's going to come then... in, is he going to play that system or? Well, then then we are very limiting ourselves to a three five two manager, a three five two setup, you know. So, I I I think. I think a club like Manchester United, you know, like I said, we should have a blueprint of the way we want to play and we should set the foundation. Should have been set up, you know, um, after Edward would have gone. I should think we they bring did up try. <laughs> With his blueprint. Yeah, you know. Is it worth uh, doing? <laughs> uh, Big phone call. It didn't do too bad last time, did it? Yeah. Um, I think... I think if, they, if they're just going to go with no, well, let's just see. But then I think we're setting up ourselves to fail again. With you know, hopefully Amram can sort it out, and I really hope he does. But if he doesn't, um, you know, and say within a year, two years, you know, he's gonna get some players in for himself, you know, we're then screwed. But like this, I, I, I don't care about formations. I just want to bloody win. But um, yeah, I I, I, football I, matches, man. And I think I think it's good, and this is just taking me on to the what we've always kind of talked about. I think there was a Sir Jim Ratcliffe interview. I think it was done a couple of days with Andy Mitten. Um, um, I think it, United We Stand magazine. Yeah, I think it was called. done a couple of days ago. I think it was a um, Bold Old Glimp game. So last, uh, not last week, the week before, uh, Andy Mitten met up with him. Uh, I think it was just literally after the announcement of the £66 um, pounds oh, God. for children <laughs> and for, for, pen- um, for everyone, man. Just... Yeah, for you know the, the the pensioners, and obviously there's a big backlash on, on that as well. And when I was reading the comments today, um, from the what he preached, what Andy Mitten had preached in the Athletic, I'm like, this guy, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, he seems so divorced from reality on, on, on what's going on. It's like every time he speaks, he seems to say the wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> to like, put his foot in the mouth all he not, the time. I just think to myself, you're British richest, Britain's richest man. You're a who doesn't live in Britain no more. Yeah, moved out for tax seasons. You're a multi-billionaire. You head up a multinational, multi-billion-dollar business. Have you not had any media training? Like, I don't get it. I mean, let's let's start with. I think the, the 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 comment that made me laugh the most was, um, you know, about him. You know, have I got it here? I think that, you know, if I can read it word for word, it'd be even better. Yeah, and this was his word. Um, I'm very cognizant that we have to look after the community because it's the community's team. But equally, I want to optimize the revenue from people who can afford it. So, under 16s can afford 66 pound. I think it used to be, you know, thirty-three pounds yeah. or something like that. I'm sure your son can pay sixty-six quid out of his own <laughs> pocket. You know? Yeah, uh, you know, well, his his son could. Uh, any children he's got, um, yeah. But um, yeah, and old age, uh, old age pensioners as well. Um, as we know, the cost of living has gone up anyway. People are struggling to put on heating bills, but yeah, you know, they want to pay sixty-six pounds. But then he said, from he wants to charge people who can afford it. Well, when the government are talking about, you know, taxing uh, richer people because they can afford more more money, uh, uh, you, don't to, want you, know, in, you know, he, he, he shouted out for Brexit uh, uh, and then as soon as that went kind of tits up, he, he exited. 
um, set up companies in the Cayman Island to who who you know part co own Manchester United, so he doesn't have to pay any tax. He lives in, in Monaco, Man. Isle of Man. You know, whatever. One of them tax havens. Well, yeah, I think it's Isle of Man. Um, Monaco, where he resides, where he doesn't have to pay any tax. You know, yeah, he's got the cheek of talking about putting the fees up for uh, people who should be able to afford to play. And then for whatever reason, he's comparing us to Fulham, saying, you know, if Fulham can charge more. So <laughs> that was be... odd. Again. That was really no, odd. You know, not working out where people, you know, do not really live around Fulham. You know, the kind of people that attend Fulham games, who can afford to attend, uh, you know. Bridge, Chelsea, all them ends. And even the ownership uh, haven't hid away that they're targeting tourists, people like for that come from America, who probably can afford those prices to come in. Whereas, yes, Manchester United you know, have a lot of... owned by Americans. Yep. <laughs> and and don't forget, yes, we have a lot of tourists who come to us. But then I think he's missing the exact point of that. I think we well, saw um, some tweets uh, even from the, uh, the ticket office saying there's still some tickets on Friday yesterday for the game. There was tickets this morning? To a Premier League game for Manchester United. Tickets available. When was the last time we saw this? Because it's not, it was last game as well, last home game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Uh, I'm just as lo- uh, lost uh, uh what Jim Ratcliffe and his Ineos team have brought to this, to this club. You the know, funniest thing I saw today was the whole thing about Rangers. He's mm-hmm. speaking to Rangers about multi club ownership. You literally got a guy from CFG, City Football Group, which is probably the number one mm. in the world for multi-club ownership. Mm. Why are you not speaking to him? Why are you going speaking to some the wannabe from Rangers? So what? He, he's he's speaking to them about setup of a multi. I don't know either. Either Ineos are going to buy into Rangers or uh, some crap's going on about multi-club ownership. But okay, why wouldn't you speak to the the city boys? No, I I, I assume he's talking right. to buying them. I mean, that's what he probably. Yeah, I think that's because, what it is. Maybe there's yeah because any other buying a stake. Yeah, Omar Barada's there. Uh, 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 Manchester United is obviously part of the CFG. He he looks a lot after a lot of the the multi clubs. So you know he'll, he'll have an idea or two about that there. But look, forget about multi clubs. Fucking deal with the club that you got at hand. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, you can't even deal with. Couldn't even deal with the ones he had, and he that's decided to the biggest one of the lot. And Ineos, and then he's fucking talking some fucking bollocks about, you know, it's mediocre. At Manchester United is not elite. It's not. I think it's highly out. What the fuck do you know about elite, especially in sports? You know what? With Ineos, yes, you know the petrochemicals is done brilliant. There's no two ways about it. Okay. Now they maybe want to feel like if you might... fail in the petrochemicals business, though, you must be a pretty bad salesman. Because <laughs> whatever it seems you like know, the rest of the world want it. Yeah, yeah. Look, look. Obviously, yeah, he's done a great job, and you can't knock it. But why do people all of a sudden then think that's going to transcend to football or to any other sports or or, or, or to another um, industry? Just because you know you've done well in that industry doesn't mean you're going to do well in every industry that there is. And clearly, it's like crossover boxing MMA, in it. <laughs> yeah. Just because you can fight in a cage doesn't mean you can fight in a ring. And just because you, you can, can fight you can in a ring doesn't mean you can fight in a cage. And I never see that happening very often. You know, boxers going into the cage. But yeah, you know, it, just because you're good in in one discipline, you know, let's call it for Patrick Chemicals. There, he's Grenadier. is by all means failing. I keep getting sponsored ads for that. Yeah, you probably will. Um, because you talk about can't afford one though. <laughs> um, you've got his leather jacket company, who's again really um posting lost. Um, yeah, that's in, been in quite a high end brand as well. You know, I'm sure there's other other areas. You know, obviously sports teams are right there in front of you who are doing absolutely rubbish. <laughs> and 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 then you know. So that, that so that's one thing. But you know what pissed me off even more in that same article? Go on. Andy Mitten talking about Qatar and how he didn't <laughs> want them. What do we say? First and foremost, I still don't understand where Qatar comes from in terms of buying the club. 
Yes, I know where Qatar is. I was there recently and I've got pictures on there. I was going to so, say, you literally uh, went. Yeah, I really know where it is. I was there recently. But, it was quite nice. But, but, but why the hell does Andy Mitten have to use Qatar? From what it's I understand, buzzword, it? it was uh, an individual from Qatar, Sheikh Yassim, who's coming from there to buy the club. So it's people like Andy Mitten, yeah, who come up with this fucking bullshit that I didn't want, you know, Qatar. I don't know why he didn't want... Why is he not saying he didn't want the individual? Yeah, it seems very... You know, what's it's it like again? they generalised it to the state when there was a lot of proof out there that it wasn't the state. The state. And I don't know how the state would have bought it because there's so many complications of, obviously, the people who and own the PSG state and all that business. P- yeah, they already own Yeah, PSG, you know, all these, other, all these other th- kind of things. So, yeah, like I said, that really riled me up. Um, and again, it goes back from the roots of this this podcast, why we started this podcast, was because flippant comments like that. Do you know what I mean? If you... Do you know what I mean? Whatever views you've got, give it, give it up properly. Do you know what I mean? And 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 for a journalist who's meant to do a lot of his research, I've not seen his research where it goes to say that it was going to be the nation state of Qatar that was going to buy Manchester United. I think, you know what it is? United We Stand has a certain audience. The Athletic has a certain audience. And I think when you bring in, when you say Qatar, we're going to buy Man United, it's it's a buzzword. It's then easy to say, oh, well, you know, we would have been a tool of this washing and that washing and this and that and X, Y, Z. But at the moment, but, we're pretty, uh, a tool of a greenwashing. Well, this is what I was going to get at. We are, you know, is he not greenwashing? He's polluted the environment. You know, didn't he? Um, they had a factory in Middlesbrough or Sunderland that actually leaked into the local water. Like, you know, so it's like, I don't, I don't know. It's... And this is what I mean. That that's what rolled me up even more. Those comments by Andy Mitten, the fucking puddle. Do you know what I mean? I'm sorry, excuse my language, but no, no. you know, Fire away, um, it'd, be, it'd be good to understand what he, what, you know, what his research on that is, and the comments that he made to show why he thinks it was actually Qatar that was buying the club. So you know, if, if Andy Mitten, please, obviously, he's not probably going to be listening. I know he won't be listening, but you know, um, somebody can tag him in. Um, answer the question Open why go against come on to yeah. the podcast <laughs> and we know that people are that ain't going to come on but yeah you know ex- exactly explain to us what that actually means because I think it's flipping comments like that um, that that put a negative light on um, Middle East or, or whatever the countries like I said I've been I just there. want to highlight as well while you're saying this mm. we don't know how the club would have gone had Jesse succeeded in his bid right it's not us saying, oh, yeah, things would have been a million times better. The one thing we know for sure is there would have been no debt, as promised. And there would have been investment, as promised. In the infrastructure, in the squad, in, ev- in everything Manchester United related, there was going to be investment. That's what was promised in that mandate. And there wouldn't look, have been any debt. Uh, look, I, I think I've said, look, that's he, all we know. He, he, he... No, look, look, that's what was said, and whether and whether it would happen, and you know that that's fair enough. We don't know, but again, I go back to we knew that the Glazers wouldn't be here. Do you know what I mean? Their greed, even in those negotiations, showed. You know uh, how they kept going up and up, and they want to go up a bit more and show a bit more. You know what I mean? And a lot of people tweeting me, oh, you know, if Jassim had only put five hundred more in, he could have had it. And I was like, mate. How do you know he hadn't put 500 more from the, his final offer from the last time? So even if he had put 500 more on this offer, how do you know yeah. it would have been that would have been the final 500 more? You know where where does the final 500 more stop? Where does it? St- yeah, like oh he could have chucked on another billion, or he could have done this, he could have done that. Well, like coulda woulda shoulda, like he could have offered 10 billion, they could have turned around and said no, we want 12. Yeah, and look, and I don't want to go down this road at the moment in terms of um, what could have happened and should have happened in terms of the ownership and who said what and done what. I think we are where we are, um, and I think I think a lot of people are realizing now what this fucking Ineos group is like. Can um, I just make one point on the ticket prices? Yeah, of course, of course. I'm seeing a lot of people on Twitter, particularly mm. match going Reds, that are still going to matches, but are complaining about ticket prices i get it you might have a season ticket 
and the 66 quid is I'm not condoning it. I'm not going to justify it. It's ridiculous. Especially when you consider, like you said, child tickets for £29, um, pensioner tickets for £29, and the other tickets used to start from about 45 from what I remember. I've not been to a game in a few years, but 45 quid upwards-ish, depending on, like, cup game or whatever. I don't know. can't remember. Um, but, yeah. Why complain about it and then still go? Someone tweeted about, oh, this is bollocks, hashtag stop exploiting loyalty. It's your loyalty. They've just exploited you. Absolute moron. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, how can you not see that? You know, and, and I think people will say, oh, but, you know, if we don't go, somebody else will go. Well, and, then let someone and, else go. And, you know, we're going to lose it and all this business. You know, people like, have a go at, like, fans like Trey, for example, who probably has to pay over the odds to get his tickets. Probably has to then pay for his travel, his hotels, etc. So what? He's a Man United fan like the rest of us. Let him do it. If you can't go, why don't you take your sixty-six pound, put it back in your back pocket, and let an influencer pay over the odds for the ticket? Why does it concern <laughs> you? An influencer, you know, and, and and again, this is the problem with the whole society. The people who are complaining uh, about this guy, Trey, like I said, I don't really follow him. I know it's from what you guys post in the group and that that I see are the same people who obviously commenting and bringing him up on their timeline, people's yeah. timeline, and people are following him. So it's you that are doing it, but you lot are blaming it. I, this is what I mean. I don't get that culture. I really don't get it. And um, yeah, look, I think I think that's um, plenty about us moaning about um where things are with with the club all again i think what we'll say is i think it's um we're not surprised uh as gutting as it is like it says when we win i'm fucking happy when we lose i'm just not surprised i'm not even gutted anymore because I, i've got so used to it that it's like a goal it goes still hurts but, like, hmm. mm, yeah. yeah you know it's like i'm not surprised so i don't get overly upset or anything like that but it still ruins your fucking weekend i mean just wrapping up we, we we've got victoria pleasant on thursday i think it's the early kickoff i think this time around it's at 5 45 or whatever it's it is 5 45 5 55 yeah. or whatever it is um yeah i'm not too sure what time it is what are you expecting from that game ain't got a clue mate <laughs> bordeaux glenn i didn't have a clue and then recently i saw they've just won their their league Oh, have they? Okay. So Fair play. clearly they're a better, better side than anyone gave them credit for. Fair play. I ain't got a clue. I could say I want a walkover. But you just you just don't know. Yeah. I, I'll settle for a listen, I'll settle for a flipping corner that goes in off someone's arse and we win one nil. Mate, uh, give me the Arsenal corner routine and, and we win and score from that. I'll, I'll, I'll take it all. Like, give me the raw. Was it Rory Delap with the throw ins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. G give me his throw. Just this... something. Just, I just want to win football games, man. I think, I think where we're at at the present moment in time, I'll, I'll, I'll take it, man. Um, okay. Uh, We'll 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 come back after um, that game. You know, we'll 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 come back before the City game. It'll be interesting no. to see how City get on. Obviously, they drew two two. I always thought, um, you know, this was the time to probably play City, um, but they're probably thinking, you know, this is time to play us as well. Uh, I think that's probably one game um, that I can't even comment on because I think both teams. Have rubbish at the present moment in time so we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that game you know um after the victoria game but yeah uh look nice having you back up so um yeah, hopefully it's been a pleasure. you know been two and, and a half weeks away um obviously nice having you back because we've not seen you on the channel for a while yeah mainly well, because know. we did try and do podcasts but <laughs> internet electricity anyone that's ever been in pakistan in india knows the vibes Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's a slog, man. Um, just want to say a lot, massive thank you. You know the numbers have gone up, subscribers, viewership on some of them vlogs mm. is amazing. So massive thank you to everyone that you know has watched them, subscribed, liked, commented, shared them. Um, massive thank you to Silo T, the boys that made this happen, Spartax, Faz, you know, Peshawar Premier League, Khalid and Ismail for inviting us. It was one hell of an experience for sure. 
Yeah, man. I, I can't I wait think, to do it all again. And I think you boys doing a fantastic job, even with the the live guy, games out there that was being streamed. Um, yeah, there was a weird audio issue. I, I need to pick it out because it was just silence and it was just football. Which don't get me wrong, sometimes <laughs> it's great, but. Yeah, yeah, I need to figure out what the audio uh, issue was. I wish they could silence some of our commentators on the games that are against Man United, in that cover Man United, should I say. Uh, but yeah, I don't think many channels at all are doing that. Um, you know, so that, that was great. Well done to, to the boys out there for doing that as well. And um, yeah, I think if anybody was in doubt about the, the passion of football in um, South Asia, um, I think that kind of you know the, the the blogs that you go out so far dismiss those it was great to see those boys talking watch them play football some talents out there yeah. um some obviously um we've seen in the vlogs in the live games and i think we'll have has a couple the more as well come out yet yes can't remember if it has but oh my god what an experience Yes, I think Splitting. I think you boys talk about audio. There's nothing there. Just you boys driving around and showing what was going on. That was interesting as well. Yeah, just um, like, we got we got quite a few copyright hits, and I was like, you know what, the music just I don't care because the music adds to it. Like, <laughs> if someone wants to claim the monetization on them videos, go ahead. I'm not bothered. I had a blast. Yeah, like I said, and I think that's always been uh, what this channel stood for as well, just to show. What you know, and the minority um, people out there that don't get the exposure, that should get the exposure. You know, there is footballs loved everywhere. Um, Man United are quite followed everywhere as well. I know we had one of the boys, United fans out there as well, so that was um, heartwarming to see. But yeah, like I said, good to have you boys back. Um, and again, thank you for everybody for watching those um, vlogs, those videos. Um, I think for the people out there, it meant quite a lot as well to see, you know, how people are watching their progress and, and you know, what they're doing. Let's try and get this um, league happening out there as well. Hopefully it will happen very soon. You know, the boys, the Brown Wonder will be part of that as well. So um, something to watch out for. But yeah, um, I think we'll wrap that up there. We'll see you just after Thursday. Um, if there's nothing else, Man United drop in between there, which is Manchester United. We know there's always going to be something happening. But uh, yeah, thank you everybody for watching.